everyone. I'm glad you've joined us. I'm Nancy Bauman, the book professor and owner of Book Karma. And I'm really glad you joined us today for our weekly webinar. So every week at 10 o'clock this time, while well, I'm in Central Time Zone, I'm not quite sure where you are, but every week we have a really informative webcast that introduces authors to new ideas, new concepts, and new professionals who can help them be successful. And today we have Amy Quayle on, and we're going to get Hi. to Amy in just a minute, but um, what um, I'm excited about introducing you to Amy, but first I want to talk to you just about a couple of things about the reason we're even here, both Amy and I, we are really passionate about helping you be successful as an author, and that's why we do what we do. And so as the book professor, I'm a book coach, and I help people write what I call high-impact nonfiction books that will either save lives, change lives, or transform society. Now, I usually, work, you know, my clients are really busy prof professionals, and they want to establish themselves as an expert in their field, and they want to increase their credibility, which um, they can do if their book is really well done, and they want to attract a following. And so together we write a really powerful book that in the end it can be expanded and um, the material can be delivered over multiple platforms like workshops or uh, seminars or keynotes or podcasts or online courses, blogs, etc. So it's never about the book, it's about the impact that you can have on the readers and you want to reach your audience wherever they're used to connecting. So that's what I do as a book coach, as the book professor. And then I've also developed and planned and um, delivered an international book marketing platform. And kind of the little backstory about that is that as a book coach, my clients were coming to the end of the road and having these fabulous books. And I thought I had this real crisis of conscience. It was like, oh my gosh, you could write the most fabulous book in the world. But if nobody knows about it, I've completely wasted your time and I felt like I'd lied to them. So I got really serious about trying to solve that problem and, and planned and developed Book Karma, which is an international book marketing platform that connects authors with new audiences around the globe. And um, it's for authors of every genre, fiction, nonfiction, and every subgenre within that and it only costs $1.99 to get this global exposure. So I encourage you all to look into it. And I've got websites, uh, web addresses on the side for both the Book Professor and for Book Karma. And you'll see those on the side. And speaking of the side notes and the chat box, at any time during this presentation, we really want to hear from you. And so if you have questions while Amy is... Um, talking about the wonderful things that she does through her publishing company. Just type them in and we'll be we'll get to all of your questions during this time together. So, um, but before I introduce Amy fully, what I want to do is to tell you about this month's contest for Book Karma. Now, if you're not already on our platform, um, you should get on it. Go to bookkarma.net and sign up so we can campaign your book. But for our subscribing authors and campaigning authors. Every month we have a different contest. This month our contest is with Book Baby and they have offered one free complete ebook publishing package that's worth $299. It's it's uh, converting your book to an ebook, it's the publishing of it, it's the promoting of it, etc. So for the authors uh, the or the author who refers the most new authors to Book Karma this month, they get that free ebook publishing package. So I uh, encourage you to be part of us. So please join in, and we will be love to have you as part of our Book Karma family. Now today, I have to tell you a little bit about Amy Quayle. Amy is the co-founder, and she's the t chief publishing officer at Wise Inc. Creative Publishing. And I want to tell you how I met Amy. Amy and I were both in a conference in Charleston a few weeks ago. I guess it's been about a month ago now. I was so impressed with what Amy does because what she does is so completely aligned with what I do in, in trying to help authors um, create high-impact books that will really have an effect on, on the readers and a positive effect at that one. So... 
Um, Wise Inc. is an agency for writers and publishers of both fiction and nonfiction, and her passion is to help authors become change agents, and that's why she launched Wise Inc. It's very similar, you know, to what my own passion is. So, um, Wise Inc. it's a it's a boutique um, indie publisher, and she provide they provide. Uh, different services that I'll let her tell you about, but I am very impressed with Amy and really, really wanted to have her on as a guest because my goal is to be uh, valuable to you guys, to really help introduce you to others in the industry who are, are making a difference and that you could actually um, engage with and, and have as part of your team as well. So, Amy, what else do I need to say about Wise Inc.? Well, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. It was wonderful meeting you as well. I I, I feel like I, I found a soul sister when we were in yeah. <laughs> at Pop Sense in Charleston. Um, and I agree that I, I think our missions really align well. Um, like you said, Why Think is all about uh, helping authors do amazing things with their words and with their books. Um, I firmly believe that there is a great power in in words, and obviously there is. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you can, I bet you can't think of one, you know, um, cultural movement that hasn't started and ended with um, with words being exchanged and yes. ideas being exchanged. And you know, I, I want every author to really think about what change will their words make, yes. and to, to think about their books as as change makers, whether it's mm -hmm. fiction or nonfiction. Um, you know, why I think is all about helping authors figure out what their goals are with publishing outside of um, just publishing a book and selling a million copies. What do you really want your book to do in the world? So, so that's what Wise Inc. is all about. We tend to attract authors who are very purpose-driven because of mm -hmm. the way that we market and because of, um, because of our mission mm -hmm. and helping change agents. So yeah, thank well, you so much. Yeah, I appreciate that. So, um, we, you know, what you're here to talk about, today is indie bestsellers and how to capture an audience um, in indie publishing, which is, you know what, that is, there's over a million books issued each year. Wow. So capturing an audience, yes. you know, I, when you start, you need to have the end in mind because like I said earlier, you could write the best book in the world and if, if you don't capture your audience, then, um, you know, we write to be read, right? So, mm -hmm. so, um, you're going to provide us some insights on how to align the book with goals and to find a strategy to connect with readers. So, um, what, what do you mean? By, what do you mean align it with your goals? How does that work? Um, you know, what you want your book to do in the world should play into every decision that you make in the publishing process, mm -hmm. from the cover design that you choose to the editorial decisions that you make to the voice. Um, to the voice in your manuscript and in your words, to um, whether you choose to do hardcover, softcover, ebook, audiobook, or all of them, um, who you're trying to reach and how you're trying to reach them, and what what you want your book to do um, should play into all of those decisions. Mm -hmm. So, um, when I talk about aligning your marketing strategy with your publishing goals, that's really what we're talking about: is figuring out what are those nuggets that you want to achieve uh, with your book. And then how do we align both a production strategy and a marketing strategy that will help you get there? Yeah, I like, I like that idea. You know, everybody says, like, they want to be a bestseller, but that's so ill-defined. What does that even mean? What is a bestseller? You know, in today's day and age, I really think that that, that term has gotten so... Um, so warped. It really, mm -hmm. it has so many different meanings now. Um, I challenge every author to, because every book is unique and every author is unique mm -hmm. and uh, the mission behind every book is unique. I really challenge every author to think about what does it mean for me to be successful? Mm -hmm. And rather than thinking about a bestseller in the traditional terms, getting on bestseller lists on USA Today and New York Times and, and now Amazon bestsellers, that's a, that's a big thing right now. Yeah. Um, those are great the tools for marketing. If you, can, if you can get on some of those lists, that's, I'm not downplaying the value of that at all. Mm -hmm. But um, to really think about what it means for you and your audience mm -hmm. to be a bestseller. Um, you know, we, we do work with a lot of nonfiction authors, as you do, Nancy. And, 
you know, I work with an author who, um, who whose book is just for grieving mothers. So mm-hmm. her version of a bestseller, because she's got that that niche of an audience, mm-hmm. it's not the same thing as um, an author who has written a traditional thriller. You know, right. it's, so I guess what, what I would say is that every book should have its own definition of what a bestseller is, and um, and I would also say that a bestseller. Um, being a bestseller isn't isn't static. It's a verb. It's something that you have to continually do oh, right. and continually uh, you have to continually pour your energy into um, into marketing your book in order to maintain that status and and connect with your audience on an ongoing basis. Of course, and you know I I know when I'm working with authors to write their books, um, we define a very very specific target market. And, and keep Absolutely. everything um, focused on that market. And then you drill to the nth degree in that market because it's really not about the book. It's about the change that you can create in the reader. So you want to make sure that your message is heard. And, and it sounds like you all have the same philosophy. You know, you don't want to write a book and say, oh, it's for everybody. But it's really not. You know, it's really not. It's for a specific slice. And when you can define that, specific slice of reader then you know where to go to find them so yes. you, you know you have better direction there absolutely and you know i i have come across a few books that everybody could get something from yes uh but that said not everybody's going to pick it up even it. even if that's the case even if everybody could get something from it yeah. that doesn't mean that everyone's going to read it so right. how do you focus that on the people who are realistically going to pick it up and um because that's your audience. It's right. not everybody, even if everybody could get something from your book. Yeah. Well, I have a funny story that kind of goes with that because I had one client and she was writing a book on, on tax planning. And I, you know, we we're talking mm-hmm. about who's the audience. She goes, Oh, this is for everybody. And I'm like, No, it's not because I don't want to read about tax planning, you know? So let's define mm-hmm. who it is and make it fun so that they really make it. And she laughed, you know, we were joking about that. But sometimes we get so into what our own message is and we think, oh my gosh, everybody could benefit it from it. And it, that may be true, yeah. but let's find the people who want the message and all. So, so you know, what do you find that, that are the biggest issues or the stumbling blocks when authors are struggling to market their books? Because obviously there's no silver bullet and, you know, we're both interested in helping authors be successful so that other people will be able to find okay. it. So what are their struggles? Uh, well, there are a few struggles that I can think of right off the bat. I'd say the biggest one is being inconsistent about how the how they market. You know, I see a lot of authors who are trying to do everything, and there are very few authors who can successfully do everything consistently. Yeah. Um, I would say that Joanna Penn <laughs> of the Creative Pen is one of those who just manages to magically be everywhere, and she yeah. does a beautiful job with that. But most authors have... Uh, day jobs outside of mm-hmm. outside of publishing their books, um, and you know it's 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 one of those things where um, you just can't be everywhere. Yeah. So I always suggest to authors to find the, a few things that you can do consistently um, that also align with where your audience is. Because mm-hmm. if if you are on Twitter and your audience isn't on Twitter, then that's a waste of time. Yeah. But if your audience is reading blogs, you should be spending time writing blogs and, and connecting with other bloggers. So I hope that makes sense. You know, focusing yeah. your energies on the things that a you can do consistently and b where your audience is most concentrated. Yeah. Well, I like that so that's idea. That's one huge mistake that I see. Yeah, and I like that idea because you can pick one thing and get into the habit of doing that one thing. Before you add something okay. else, because, you know, we get all these messages about, about what we should be doing, and that's very stressful, oh, yeah. you know? And that's one of the reasons that when I developed Book Karma, you know, one thing that authors can do consistency is log in and click and share other books, and other authors do the same thing with their network. So that's a tiny thing that they can do consistently. And, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. yeah, if, you know, I, and I get caught up in the whole marketing you know, morass as well. But I've kind of come down to the thing is I'm going to plan out one strategy and then do that before I add other mm-hmm. things in. So what's what? What's the problem with the inconsistency, Amy? 
I'm, I'm sorry, what was that? What, 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 does, what problem does inconsistency create when you're marketing inconsistently? When you're marketing inconsistently, it just doesn't go anywhere. So you're, mm -hmm. you're investing effort in doing a few different things, but um, if you don't do them on an ongoing basis, if you're not continually touching your audience in those specific ways, then you might as well not be doing it at all. Mm -hmm. Because in today's world, as everybody knows, there's so much noise out there yes. that it really takes um, a regular drumbeat on, or in some of these channels mm -hmm. um, in order to make make an impact, in order for you to be heard by your audience. And so, you know, you might have something that happens one day, but then if you don't do it again in, in a few weeks or in a couple of days or whatever, um, that one instance is just going to get lost and that effort will be wasted. So, you know, marketing is effective when it's done, when it's a few things that are done consistently on an ongoing basis. Um, I also suggest to authors to outline, um, you know, for themselves, you know, what are the things I need to do pre-launch, what are the things I need to do um, in maybe the 90 days after launch, and then what are the things that I'm going to do on a consistent, ongoing basis beyond my initial release, because mm -hmm. it's going to look different when your book is just coming out to, um, you know, after then after it's been out a year or so. It's your marketing is just going to look different. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, maybe having certain goals for different um, milestones, is that what you're talking about? Or what are publishing goals? I mean, what, what you talked about that earlier, that they have goals. What does that really mean? Yes. When I'm talking about publishing goals, I am talking about any goal that you have for what you want the book to do in the world outside of the bottom line. It should not have anything to do with a number of books that you want to sell or a dollar amount that you want to make. Um, it shouldn't have anything to do with that. So an example would be, I, I know I mentioned the author who writes for bereaved mothers. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a goal for her would be to, and this is, it, it can be vague like this, that's okay. Uh, mm -hmm. A goal for her would be to, um, to uplift bereaved mothers on Mother's Day, or to, to give them a sense of peace on Mother's Day. So that could, that could be one, one goal. And when she has that goal, then she's going to make specific um, marketing tactics around how to reach that goal. And when you focus on what your book is doing in the world, rather than that bottom line, that's when you're actually going to be doing the things that are going to help the bottom line. But if all you're paying mm -hmm. attention to is the bottom line, I've sold X, X number of books, I have made X number of dollars, then you're not going to be thinking about the things that your book is going to be doing in the world and you're not going to be, you're not likely to be um, engaging in those activities that are going sure. to actually sell the book. Yeah, and obviously there's goals for, you know, fiction and nonfiction and, and um to be able to set those goals in the beginning is probably very key. But then you have to have strategies that contribute to that. So if you kind of follow your example of the uplifting yeah. mothers on Mother's Day, what would be some strategies that would um, maybe contribute to doing that very thing? What would an example be? Yeah. Well, I mean, do you, I mean um, yeah, once you have goals, yeah. then you have to figure out how to get there, right? Exactly. So a couple of things that she is doing, she's releasing a special Mother's Day edition um, mm -hmm. that's, that's just for bereaved, so it's a gift for mm -hmm. bereaved mothers on mm -hmm. Mother's Day. So it's a special edition for those, uh, for people who don't know what else to get mothers on, on Mother's Day. Um, so, so she's doing that. She's releasing a special edition. She's also, um, she's also doing a blog tour on bereaved parent blogs. Mm -hmm. Um leading up to Mother's Day to to market the book in you know to these audiences and, and connect with them in that way. So mm -hmm. she's doing two specific things to reach that goal. Yeah, that's great. So and but can you do what other examples do you have of people developing strategies that drive to their goals? That was Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I um I, another example that I can think of, um, I have an author who uh who wrote a book for as a speaking tool, and he wanted mm -hmm. to use the book not not as a huge revenue builder, but yeah. as something that would get him to the next level in speaking. Yeah. And so, 
after he wrote the book, he used the book in his in all of his speaking pitches, and he was able to get to a higher speaking fee because he had a book, and he used the book in that way. Yeah. So it can also do things for you in other ways. If that, if yeah, that, that makes that's example. great. I like that because I I work with a lot of people who are public speakers mm-hmm. too, and they need a credibility piece. And but it's only a credibility piece if it's very very well done. So that's yeah. how they start to establish themselves as an expert in their field because they've got this credibility Absolutely. piece. So so different goals. I have for another different... author. Oh, I was just going to give one more example. Mm-hmm. I've got another author who is writing a book all about Minnesota Olympians. So people who have gone to the Olympics from Minnesota. And he's connected with these people and interviewed them. And uh, one thing that he's going to be doing, and the book is not out yet, but one thing that he's going to be doing um, to market his book, because one of his goals is uh, connecting with, with, you know, the fans of, of these people, he's going to each of their hometown newspapers to get articles. And, and he's going to be featuring each of them in unique articles aimed at their hometown. So he's recognizing that his audience is um, is the, the family and mm-hmm. friends and, and fans of, of these people. It's, it's not fans of him, but it's fans of the people that he's interviewed. And so he's aligning his goals with, um, with connecting with, with his audience through, through the people he's interviewed. Yeah, and so what's kind of bubbling up here is that this is not passive, right? Authors have to be active in it and be creative and to be maybe thinking a little bit outside the box to draw attention because nobody wants to stand out on the street and say, somebody buy my book. You know, you want to attract your audience. Yes. And, And don't you think it's a lot more effective rather than making sure your book, spending your energy you know, having a Twitter account, having a Facebook account, having a LinkedIn account, having a web presence, having, you know, rather than spending your energy just, you know, passively having those things available just mm-hmm. so you have landing pages, don't you think it's a lot more effective to, like, like the Minnesota author who's reaching? Oops, we lost your audio. Because, Red, don't you think that his marketing tactics are going to be, that one thing is going to be more effective than, you know, just making a presence out there and, and leaving it and having it be static. Yeah, of course, because you're going right to the people who are interested in it and so you're really drilling into your audience. So, yes. so what about, exactly. um, so you have different stages of your book because you mentioned earlier about um, planning and pre-launch and that type of thing. So are the goals different for each one of those then, Amy? Well, you know, as I, I touched on earlier, when we are working with authors, uh, we have we we break out all of our marketing tactics and um, launch plans into three different categories. Mm-hmm. So we first figure out you know what the who they're trying to reach and how they're trying to reach them, and then what the publishing goals are. And based on the publishing goals, then we put the strategies together. And then once we have the strategies, we put to do lists together for the ninety days leading up to launch the 90 days after launch, and what you're doing beyond. Mm. So you break out your to-do list into three different categories. And in that way, you can prioritize, you know, where your energy should be um, and when you should be investing it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because, you know, to have a to-do list, it's easy to execute, right? Mm -hmm. You just do the thing and check it out. But to get there takes a lot of thought and a lot of planning and a lot of input and obviously that you all do a really good job of helping authors with that so yeah. what is there anything and we start that process from the very beginning too okay. that's that's hugely important we mm-hmm. start talking about the strategy just like a traditional press would we right. start talking about the strategy and how um, how the book's going to be marketed um, you know from the very beginning before we get mm-hmm. into the editing process before we get into the design process uh, we know who we're trying to reach and how we're going to be reaching them. Yeah, and that makes a lot of sense that it does. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, so there might, there's a di- maybe a different approach for the different kind of book, the different goal the author has, but is there anything that works overall for people, like, a, you know, a consistent <laughs> tactics that, that authors should employ? You know, that's a tough one. Um, because for the most part, I... 
I I have not. I mean, it, it, it is really. Um, it's tough to say that there's one thing that every author should do. I guess one thing that I would say that every author should do is find one method to continually give content to your audience. And so that's, I know that's a, that's a more general tactic, mm -hmm. but if you can find one method to continually touch your audience with new content, that's how you create fans from people who have read your book once. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So whether that's, you know, connecting with them on Facebook and continually posting things that relate to your topic and relate to your book, or whether that means um, blogging and, and having a consistent blog that that either talks about your writing experience or talks about, you know, maybe maybe you have a food blog and, mm -hmm. and you're selling your cookbook there, but you also are continually uh, sending out recipes. You know, it's finding one consistent way to deliver content. Yeah, and that's you touched on that earlier. So it's being organized, deliberate, and and consistent. Right. So I wouldn't say that there's one medium that every author should use, but mm -hmm. the one tactic is all you know, giving content on a continual basis. So what about and then so maybe that's speaking for you? Maybe mm -hmm. it's maybe it's not online. Mm -hmm. So what about uh, social media? What do you tell authors about social media? <laughs> I tell authors to, uh, and it's, it's pretty much what I've said before, um, find, find at least two things that you can do consistently. So, you know, I, I, I don't think that LinkedIn is for every author, and I don't think that Facebook is for every author, and I don't think that Twitter is for every author. But um, if you can find two social media mediums that you can use on an ongoing basis, and that means daily if possible, Oh, daily. Um, okay. Then, I, I, I think I think a social media outlets should be used daily, if possible. Mm -hmm. um, blogging is a little different, but yeah. if you can find one social media outlet or two social media outlets that you can use daily, um, then you're going to be successful and you're going to be able to connect with your audience on an ongoing basis. So I don't suggest having it up everywhere if it means that you're going to have static pages. Mm -hmm. That's That is the enemy of... A successful social media campaign okay. is a static page. Uh, yeah, and I like that. So daily, I I um I like that because social media is sort of like in the moment, right? So, do you have mm -hmm. specific tools or anything that you suggest to authors that they could maybe sit down and schedule it all for the week or what? Or, you know, oh that, yes, that would be a time. I saver. definitely do. Yeah. Two of my very favorite tools that I use. Um, First one is if this then that, and it's a tool that connects my social media pages so that if I post something on my Facebook page, it'll also send out a tweet for me. Um, that's one of my very favorite tools because it allows me to double up on on my social media presence. Mm -hmm. Another tool that I really love is Buffer. I'm sure that a lot of people use that as well, but mm -hmm. it's a way that I can. Um, and you can use that to connect your social media pages as well, but I generally use Buffer to uh, schedule out tweets so that I can be tweeting even when I'm not present. So, you know, if I know I have a long weekend, for example, and maybe I'm going up north, I'm not going to have Wi-Fi, I can schedule out, you know, five to ten tweets to go out over the weekend so that I'm still present. That I've never heard of if this than that. I'll have to look into that because I like the idea of, you know, just yes, concentrating yes. your effort. It's a lot to keep up with, and it's nice that we have tools. Now, I always advocate to authors, too. I have to tell them, say, look, you're going to have to be prepared to spend a little money. And so, you know, we're always, you know, often looking for that free thing, which Twitter's free, but it can take a lot of time if you're just, you know, going in every two hours to do things. So, I don't know what the cost mm -hmm. of these other services are. I imagine there are some, but you have to consider the trade-off of the value of your time and the impact. And like you mm -hmm. said, if you want to be consistent, you know, yeah. if, if and, there are tools... And both help. of the tools that I mentioned have free packages. Oh, okay. Uh, but I know that, you know, you can upgrade, of course, and, yeah. and have it be a little bit more um, user-friendly for you. But they do have free packages. Well, and when we're trying to communicate with people and we're saying we're sending out 
tweets or messages or blogs or Facebook posts and stuff, we're assuming that there's a fan base here. So that needs to be built at some point. So what, what do you think the best tools are to build your fans? Uh, the best tools to, I mean, I, if you, well, I've got a few different suggestions. Um, when your book comes out, I think a blog tour is one of the best things that you can do if you, for any author, um, because there are blogs on all different types of content. So if, if you're a fiction author, if you are a nonfiction author, there's a, there's likely a blog out there that your audience visits. And so one of the things that I would suggest doing in, you know, maybe the six months before launch, um, is make you know, do some research, invest three hours to do some research on bloggers who share audience an audience with you, and reach out to them, connect with them, and and this is one of those things where you know it's always great to have an assistant if you <laughs> can <laughs> get some help with that. But um, it is really good though to have the author, you know, start these relationships and and have mm -hmm. a relationship on an ongoing basis too, so that when you're next book comes out, they say, oh, sure, Amy, I, I remember connecting with you on your first book. So take time to build relationships and do a blog tour, because a blog tour is a great way to ride the coattails of other people's yes. successes. Yeah. And so that's a great way to build a fan base, um, you know, leading into um, your launch. Okay, you so know, let's it, just It's a great way to get, get that started. Let's just back up for a second. What is a blog tour? Sure. Some if you don't know what a blog tour is, a blog tour means that you are being, you're either being interviewed, you are writing a guest post, mm -hmm. or you're getting a book review on another blogger's uh, blog. Um, and so it, it's a way for you to deliver content to them mm -hmm. because they need content for yes. their audience on an ongoing basis. Um, but then you know you can link back to your page as well. Mm -hmm. So. So really, you're both getting something out of it. Yeah, and and so doing a little research and, and just reaching out to those folks and obviously following yeah. their blogs helps too, so that they'll be open to you. Right, right. Yeah, so then let's say you're building, what other things can people do to build a fan base? Well, like I said, you know, doing, um, doing a blog tour is a really great way to get started. Um, I always like to say that, you know, doing a combination of grassroots marketing and some larger, big-scale um, mm -hmm. online marketing is a really good mm -hmm. way to go. So engaging your ambassadors in the maybe three months before launch, the mm -hmm. 90 days before launch, make a list of the people who you know, who are in your circle, who um, you know, who maybe share an audience with you, but you know, people that you've connected with, um, who you know would help you market your book in some way. So people who would, you know, if you're doing if you're doing a crowdfunding campaign, for example, you know that they would donate to your campaign. Mm -hmm. Or the people who you know would, if you, you know, if you sent them an email and said, "Will you go buy my book and write a review?" Those people who you know would do that for you. Make that list in the, you know, before the 90 days before launch, and then. Um, you know, engaging them in some, you know, pre-launch activities like writing reviews and and maybe pre-ordering your book. I think that's a really great way to um, get your fan base going. Okay. And also asking them to post on your behalf. I always suggest making it as easy as possible for your ambassadors to help you. So giving them links to, to your book pages mm -hmm. where they can either buy the book or write a review, mm -hmm. writing sample tweets or Facebook posts that you'd really yes. love for them mm -hmm. to post on your behalf. Mm -hmm. So all they have to do is copy and paste. Make it as easy as possible for them to help you. And that goes for the bloggers, too, when you're connecting with them. Make it as easy and attractive um, as possible for, for them to help you. And think about it from the perspective of how can I help them so that they can help me. Yeah, and that's really important, too, because when you're asking people for favors, they're not less busy than you are. So when you actually provide all that information, that makes it, then they'll say, hey, sure, this is not going to take any time. You know, I'll be happy to do that. Yep. Okay, so Amy, you're telling exactly. us a lot of things that we can do. So I'm a first-time author. I'm scribbling all these notes, but I have no idea how to get started. How does Wise Inc. work with authors to accomplish all this? Can you tell us a little bit about what you guys do from, you know, soup to nuts? Sure, absolutely. 
Um, well, the first thing that we ask authors when they come to us is, um, obviously, who do you want to reach and what do, you, what do you want your book to do in the world? And oftentimes they don't have the answers to that yet, but we do have a system that will guide them through mm-hmm. um, figuring that out and figuring out exactly what they want their book to do. So we have a system that will that will help them do that. And then once we have that piece down, then we start pulling the other pieces together, you know, who, aligning them with, with the perfect editor who's really going to um, help their work shine, um, finding the perfect, you know, uh, cover designer who, who specializes in their genre um, and has a, a style and flavor that, that we need for, for their audience. Um, so we pull all those other piece, pieces together once we, once we know uh, who we're trying to reach and how we're trying to reach them. And, um, and then we put together a publishing plan, too, for them early on um, that's outlining what the timeline would look like and, and figuring out when the m- most strategic time to release the book to the public might be. And, um, and we also have full-service distribution as well mm-hmm. uh, for authors who want to go into the traditional distribution system to get into libraries and, and bookstores mm-hmm. and Barnes and Noble, of course, and um, other avenues like that. And then the marketing. So, <laughs> and then the marketing. Yeah. Which you said so, starts so sort of in the beginning, and then so do you help them create specific plans and um, you know timelines and to do lists like we talked about earlier. Absolutely. That's that's what we that's what we do throughout the process. We start with a big brainstorming session. That's what our, our initial strategy session is, uh, where we unroll what our system is for figuring out, um, you know, what their book's going to do. And then we, um, and then we do help them, and it's an evolving piece as, as we go, but we help them put together a full written strategy um, that outlines their specific tactics and also the milestones that they should watch for to measure their success, you know, for the 90 days leading up, the 90 days after, mm-hmm. and then beyond. What are the things that they need to be doing beyond? So we absolutely help them with, with their marketing strategy. That's yeah. one of the biggest pieces that makes why think different. Um, but we also have a lot of partners in, in marketing as well. We've got mm-hmm. PR people. We have social media experts who can actually implement social media for our, our clients. Mm-hmm. Um, we've, we've got people who can help in a, a wide array of areas, um, event planning, and so whatever pieces we need to bring to the table, we can do that um, for individual authors, depending on um, what strategy we develop. And I imagine you help them in the beginning to kind of work out a budget so that they're not surprised by this thing. Because, you know, the publishing, oh, you yes, know, yes. the pieces can cost money, but not all at the same time. So, yeah, you know, and you right. work within what their budget is in order to accomplish the goals that they have. Absolutely, and everything with Wise Inc. Everything is pay as you go. Yeah, you're only paying for the step that you're actually in at any given time. So it's Wise Inc. Creative Publishing, and then again, say again, kind of what your niche is, Amy. Um. Sure, sure. So we are a we are a full service um, boutique indie publisher. When I say boutique, that means that everything we do is 100% custom. Um, we build each project from the ground up. And so we work with around 50 authors a year. And the reason that we work with uh, only 50 authors a year is because we really get in the trenches with our mm-hmm. authors. And so we tend to attract authors who, who really want their books to do amazing things, yeah. again, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we really tend to attract purpose-driven authors. Yeah. And so that would be our, our biggest niche is mm-hmm. authors who, who want their books to do amazing things in the world. Um, and authors who, who understand that in order to indie publish successfully, they have to do it right, and they have to um, make you know certain um, investments both in time and, and in appropriate uh, production steps to, to do it the right way. Um, and I'm talking about you know doing the checks and balances with editing and design and proofreading, and you know our edit- our authors usually have at least three rounds of editing. Yes as well. Um, so taking the time and energy to do it right. Well, I love what you guys are doing. I mean, that's why we immediately had this alignment and meeting of the minds and, like you said, a new soul sister. But I really love to share the excellent service providers that I meet along the way because you need a tribe. 
And I think that anybody who wants to publish their book that has a high impact and has meaning to it could not go wrong. Um, they could go wrong if they didn't connect with you all, but your intent is to keep authors on track and to help them be successful and to accomplish the goals that they have with their book. So, Amy, I can't yep. thank you enough for your time today. Thank you so much. Of course. And it's Wise Inc. Creative Publishing. And so how would they contact you if they would, wanted to do so? If you are interested in contacting us, um, our website is Wise Inc. Pub, uh, W-I-S-E-I-N-K-P-U-B dot com. And you can email me at amy, A-M-Y, at wiseinkpub.com. I would love to connect with any of you yeah. uh, if you'd like to uh, schedule a free consultation or okay. talk to us about your book. You know, we can help you figure out um, what you want to do with it. I, that's what I thrive on. <laughs> yeah. Well, these are good people at Wise Inc. And, and there's a lot of ways that you can go wrong in connecting and engaging people who aren't reputable. So I th hope that if you, um, for your next book project, you'll connect with Amy and Wise Inc. Creative Press. So thank you so much, Amy. And, thank you. Um, again, it's amy at wiseinkpub.com. And you can reach me at nancy at thebookprofessor.com. So we hope to connect further with you. Have a great day.